Okay, so now I'd like to talk about sp2 or sp squared hybridization. So we saw in the last video when we talked about sp3 hybridization that the s orbital can combine with the p orbitals to form these sp whatever hybrid orbitals. So with sp3, the s orbital combined with three of the p orbitals, all three of them, to make four sp3 hybrids. Well, sp2 hybridization is when the s orbital combines with only two of those p orbitals it leaves the other one alone. The other one is along for the ride and unhybridized. And the s orbital combines with two p orbitals to make three sp2 hybrid orbitals. So notice that the total number of hybrid orbitals that is formed, three, is the same number of standard atomic orbitals that combine together. So there's one s orbital, two p orbitals, that's a total of three, and there are three sp2 hybrids as well. One s orbital plus two p orbitals, three sp2 hybrids. So these sp2 hybrids uh, are all uh, energetically equivalent and they, they all have the same shape and they are all uh, one-third s character or 33 percent and two-thirds or 67 percent p character. And it turns out that this uh, certain combination, this certain mathematical combination of standard atomic orbitals uh, results in hybrid orbitals that are 120 degrees apart. So the sp2 orbitals are, they have this uh, trigonal planar arrangement. But then again you also have this unhybridized p orbital. So in this picture they're shown apart from one another, one another but how does that look uh, when we look at all of the orbitals together? So what, what does that look like? So this is basically what a what an sp2 hybridized atom uh, looks like. So allow me to uh, briefly explain this picture. So each of the green lobes represents an sp2 hybrid orbital and there are three of them. So this one's an sp2, this one's an sp2, and this one back here is an sp2. And they are 120 degrees apart from one, from one another. And I should point out also that they're, uh, in this picture it appears as if the orbitals contain only one lobe, but uh, in, in actuality there is a small uh, back lobe on the other side of the nucleus for each one of these orbitals. Just for the sake of the fact that I can't draw, I, uh, I, I have excluded that back lobe, but just keep in mind that it's there. So you have the three sp2 orbitals that are 120 degrees apart, trigonal planar, and then you have this whole thing here, this whole red thing, is a single p orbital. So this is the unhybridized p orbital because there's three orbitals three p orbitals total two of them went uh, combined with the s orbital to make the sp2 hybrids one of them is still unhybridized and that turns out to be very very important uh, for the purposes of uh, bonding so uh, to, to turn your attention i like to turn your attention to uh, a molecule in which atoms are sp2 hybridized and that molecule is uh, ethylene or ethene, C2H4. So if you draw a Lewis structure for C2H4, then you'll get something that looks like this. And you will, uh, you'll find that, there, that, that the two central carbons are doubly bonded to one another. So there's this, there's these single covalent bonds between carbon and hydrogen, but then you have this double covalent bond between these two carbons. And if you were just applying Lewis theory alone, there's, there's nothing about Lewis theory that, that gives any um, insight as to the nature of the double bond. I mean, for all we know, each of these two bonds in the double bond are equivalent. But according to valence bond theory, the two bonds are, are, are highly distinct from one another. So if we look at the actual picture of what's going on with C2H4, it really looks something like this. Okay. So this uh, bond in the middle here between the two carbons, this central bond is one of the bonds. So it's a double bond, so we have two bonds. This is one of the bonds, this direct overlap of these of the hybrid orbitals, of the sp2 hybrid orbitals. And then we have this other bond which is formed uh, by the p orbitals, okay? And that is a, a not an over not a head-on overlap, but a sideways overlap. So there's two different kinds of bonds in a double covalent bond, and the the direct overlap that's what we call a sigma bond. So sigma bonds are a direct head-on overlap of orbitals. So 
all of the all of the orbital overlaps that we've seen, all of the chemical bonds that we've seen so far with valence bond theory, have all been sig uh, sigma bonds. Any single covalent bond consists of a sigma bond, a linear head-on overlap of orbitals. So the bond between the two hydrogens in an H2 molecule, that's a sigma bond between uh, S orbitals. Uh, the bond between two chlorine atoms in a Cl2 molecule, that's a sigma bond between P orbitals. Uh, here we have an, a heteronuclear sigma bond between an S orbital and a P orbital, that's also possible. And then the uh, the carbon-hydrogen bonds in methane are also sigma bonds. Uh, that would be a sigma bond between an sp3 hybrid and a 1s orbital. So s orbitals, p orbitals, hybrid orbitals, pretty much every kind of orbital is capable of this direct head-on linear overlap that we call a sigma bond. The second type of bond is what we call a pi bond, which is a parallel or sideways overlap of p orbitals. And this turns out to have a very important impact on the chemical properties of compounds uh, that are doubly bonded. So any, any double covalent bond that you see consists of a sigma bond and a pi bond. Okay. So if we look back at our model of ethylene, well each of the green lobes represents an sp2 hybrid okay so if we look if we turn our attention to one of the carbons we have basically what we've seen before where we have the three sp2s and then we have the one p orbital that is uh that goes perpendicular to the plane formed by the sp2s and then two of those sp2s overlap with a one s orbital so these blue spheres are supposed to represent hydrogen atoms okay and then when we talk about the double co the double covalent bond we're talking about a sigma bond, a direct overlap between two of the sp2 hybrids. And then we're also talking about a pi bond between t the two unhybridized p orbitals. So let me go ahead and write that in. So this bond down here, this bond up here, this is a sigma bond between an sp2 hybrid and another sp2 hybrid. Okay, and then this overlap, I haven't really, I didn't really draw it as an overlap, I kind of drew these lines, but that's just, again, because I can't draw these things very well without it becoming all convoluted and, and uh, cluttered. This, this p orbital interacting with this p orbital is what we call a pi bond. So this is a pi bond between two p orbitals. So only p orbitals can pi bond, okay? And uh, I'll I'm going to leave it here for now. But in the next video, I'm going to discuss uh, the importance of uh, pi bonds and basically uh, how pi bonds account for the rigidity of double bonds. So you may have heard uh, in another uh, from other lessons that double bonds are, are are rigid and that you cannot freely rotate around a double bond, but you can rotate around a single bond. So I'm going to elaborate on that a little bit more. Uh, in the next video. And uh, all right, take it easy.